Buen dia a todos, bienvenidos. In this video, I want to share with you how I learned Spanish and then eventually Nicaraguan slang. Not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but I actually have been told many times that my Spanish is really good and people wonder how I got to where I am now. So, así que si está curioso, sigue viendo. Or if you are learning or hope to learn to speak Spanish comfortably and fluently, maybe you can pick up a few tips. Me amo Darlene, aka Dars, and on this channel I help you to quickly understand and respond to spoken Spanish with a mix of vlogs and sit-down videos. If you're interested in this type of content, consider subscribing and let's get into the video. I first learned things like grammar and sentence structure and pronunciation in school. The formal and the proper stuff and the impractical things like donde esta la biblioteca, whoever uses that. And the stuff like upside down question and exclamation marks and where to put the accents and all of that. I was pretty sure of my Spanish skills, but since I was such a shy person, I never actually practiced speaking Spanish with other people. I... Hi, Henny. You wanna come say hi? Okay. Look. <laughs> okay, bye. I was too scared to really put my skills to the test and also I lived in a very non-diverse small town so who was I gonna practice with anyway? I mean, I suppose I could have tried harder with like friends who were also taking Spanish class and practice with them outside of class, but I never really did. I've always been pretty good at like memorizing flashcards and memorizing facts in order to take a test. So things like vocabulary, no era un problema para mí. The conjugating though, that is something that took me a while to get a hold of. I remember from ninth grade Spanish class, my teacher taught us this chant, o as a amos an, o es e emos en, o es e imos. In, right? I can't even like remember the chant anymore because I don't have to use it but I used to definitely like chant in my head to think what ending goes on to the word when I'm trying to say I am doing something or she or he or we or them. Of course if you're trying to hold a conversation and conjugating that way where you have to think of a chant and then be like okay which one goes with which one it takes a little bit to <laughs> actually say what you want to say but eventually uh, I was able to just speak without going over that chant in my head. And if you don't know what conjugating is, I'll probably upload a video about it before too long, something that's really easy to understand because words like conjugating, verb, adjective, I know that stuff is like, woo, like I did not understand that stuff until I learned Spanish and I was supposed to have learned it in English class, so. Comment below though if you know what conjugating is or not, just a quick yes or no. Also coming out of Spanish classes, many years of Spanish classes, I could leer y escribir, leer y escribir en español <laughs> for the most part. Not like I was reading novels or writing essays in Spanish, but at least with reading and writing my brain had time to really process things and figure out what was being said and then be able to respond back like when I was texting Tomas for example. My husband from Nicaragua in case you don't know. So texting of course was way easier for me than actually talking cara a cara with a human being in real time. Which is something I really struggled with actually being able to understand and respond to people in conversation. <laughs> so after graduating from school and like I said, many years of Spanish classes. <laughs> Yo fui a un país where they speak Spanish, Nicaragua, and promptly was completely lost. I did not understand how the Nicas spoke. They slur their words together a lot. I mean, if you think about it, probably every language is like this for the most part. I mean, in English, we do that. You don't say, I am going to go to the store and buy a loaf of bread. Wow, that took forever to say. <laughs> you say, I'm gonna go to the store and buy a loaf of bread. It's like just something we learn to do. And ellos no ocupan the exact proper Spanish, like what you read out of a textbook. And they certainly don't enunciate every letter of every word. So for a very long time, I just listened. I listened hard. I 
I've actually been told I'm a really good listener. I kind of learned this from childhood, I guess. And I think eventually it was partially just because I was so shy, I couldn't say anything. So I would just listen to people. But yeah, I kind of honed that skill of really just being able to listen and understand and take in and observe observate, <laughs> observe. <laughs> and I think this is definitely something you need to work on when you're learning a new language. You do need to really listen to other people speaking and pick up the little nuances and the way they say things and be able to say it back like that or like repeat how you hear things basically. Yo sé que esto ayudó my listening skills because I eventually started being able to pick out started being able to pick out words of slurred sentences. Super fast slang filled Spanish. <laughs> and then I realized eventually that I would find myself saying, que, como, or what, before I had time to really process something, but then I would figure out what they said before they repeated themselves. And I think even in English, I kind of tend to do this. I don't know if you do or if you know anybody who does this. So sometimes we just, need to trust that we're going to understand what was said and wait a beat to process before we just automatically jump to saying what? In Nicaragua they tend to say como when they didn't understand. So, unas cosas que hice to really help in this area of listening and understanding. Listening to music. Some Spanish music, some parts of some songs, sometimes the whole song. They're like a step up from classroom Spanish to where it's like not nearly as enunciated and perfect but it's a little easier to understand than spoken Spanish like in the streets. And especially if you can listen to the music while you read the lyrics, that can really help a lot. Something I did a lot, a lot. Videos and movies, the same thing. You can listen to the Spanish words being spoken and read the subtitles at the same time. Claro que esto only helps if the spoken Spanish is the same as the subtitles. I don't know if you've noticed sometimes like, it's like they used one translator for the spoken Spanish and a different translator for the subtitles because the subtitles use different words than the spoken Spanish. Kind of strange. Start with kids shows if you need a little bit slower, like even more enunciated and simpler words to understand. Even to have Spanish going on in the background when you're not even really focused on it is actually really good to help your brain to just get used to the sound of spoken Spanish, which can help improve both your pronunciation and your ability to like pick out words from slurred sentences in Spanish. Hay veces puedes get the gist of what somebody is saying without fully hearing and understand every single word that is spoken. Like, can you think of a time when you were only kind of half listening to somebody who was talking to you, even in English? You may not have been able to repeat every single word they said, but you know basically what they're talking about, right? You, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like that. And anything else you can find with native Spanish speakers just talking is great. Just Google it, you know? Vivimos ahorita in a time that is great to just, you have everything at your fingertips. Find podcasts, radio, news in Espanol, YouTubers, or put your Netflix in Spanish. This just may be the hardest part. Si yo lo puedo hacer, you can do it too. Because this was especially hard for me. As you probably know, I was super shy, super low to like no confidence in myself. I mean, I had a hard enough time trying to speak with people in English outside of like my family and close friends. So add the discomfort of being unsure of the words you're putting together. You don't even know if you're making any sense. And you've got one red-faced, spluttering, embarrassed gringa in Nicaragua. <laughs> Luckily, I met this guy who was like super persistent and wouldn't give up on me even if it meant being super paciente every time I tried to pull out the English Spanish dictionary on my phone <laughs> in the middle of conversations. La gente dice que just go to a Spanish speaking country and immerse yourself in the language and oh you'll pick it up in no time. But that's not the whole truth. I spent a long time in Nicaragua not improving my Spanish at all. Why? Because I kept to myself. I was shy. I didn't go out of my comfort zone. I didn't try to talk to people. These are things you have to do if you actually want to speak Spanish. You really need to put yourself out there and do the work and practice. You really, really do. 
but you can start small. Don't think your first step is just gonna be like, llegar a una fiesta and there's music blasting and people talking all around and you're just gonna like jump into a group conversation and speak with people. No way, baby steps here now, slow down. <laughs> so some things you can work on, talk to yourself in the mirror in Spanish. You can say something slow and then repeat it. Un poco más rápido, un poco más rápido, un poco más rápido, un poco más rápido. That was a bad example because I'm not good at saying más rápido. There's certain letters that like más and rápido, like since rápido starts with R and más ends with S, it's like certain combinations are hard for me to do. But anyway, you get the idea. Also read books out loud in Spanish. Words are gonna feel clunky for a bit in Spanish when you're saying them out loud. And so that's why I say to practice, even if nobody can hear you, whatever, it's fine. Your mouth needs to get used to moving in a different way. And even for me, like I just said, mas rápido, the word doesn't quite want to come out because I don't practice it enough. Or if I end up saying it all weird, then I just be like, bah, and move on. Like I don't try to improve certain things, but the more you practice, the more your mouth is just gonna get used to it, like I said. Send voice messages in Spanish a alguien que conoces. Bonus if they speak Spanish and can respond back to you in Spanish. And literally do anything that gets you out of your comfort zone. Practice conversations with strangers in English if that's not something you normally do. That will even help you when you go to speak Spanish with somebody. If you think about it, what really is holding you back from speaking Spanish and practicing? Because if the desire is there, it's not that hard to find somebody to practice with. By the way, if you really can't find anyone to practice with, which Google it. <laughs> I'm on Instagram at Dars Rojas. If you want to send me a voice message, I will be happy to help you practice your Spanish. At this current time, I can still respond to all my messages. I don't get that many, so I can send you a voice message back in Spanish. So now, since you have someone to practice with, there's no excuses that you can't find a study buddy. Why don't you just do it? For me, it was fear, shyness, perfectionism. If I didn't know 100% exactly what I could say in any given situation, which is impossible, you don't even know what you're gonna say in English situations. And if I wasn't sure of myself that I was gonna be able to say it exactly right and be understood and be able to understand whatever somebody was gonna say back to me, I'd rather just shut up and not say anything. I was scared to say anything at all if it wasn't gonna be perfect. How silly is that? But it's a real thing. Like maybe that's the tr that's the case for you as well. And if so, that means you need to work on expanding your comfort zone because the more you do that, the less fear you'll have and the quicker you'll learn Spanish because you'll finally put yourself out there and actually speak in and practice. <laughs> practice, 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 practice. Just practice. So once I was getting more comfortable with just regular Spanish and, you know, of course I have been immersed in Spanish. I've gone to Nicaragua many times. So, and of course my husband speaks Spanish. He's in Nicaragua and his family. So like once I was able to get the comfort and ability to actually speak Spanish with other people, that's when I could start really concentrating on like slang words because when people start using words that you don't understand in conversation, then you say, hey, what does that mean? ¿Qué significa esto? ¿Qué significa eso? And even if it doesn't make sense at first, eventually you start to get a handle on things. And so one thing that has been, I guess maybe a, a big thing for me, or a, an advantage or something with having a native Spanish speaker and he didn't speak English when we first met was he would have to explain things to me in Spanish. So I wasn't learning the explanations or definitions of Spanish words in English. I started learning the definitions of Spanish words in Spanish. And if you'd like to learn more specific Nicaraguan slang words, check out the link below. I'll put it up here as well. And really, more important than learning the slang and the accent is just to go out and practice. But the more you practice, the more you just kind of pick up words in conversation. And also for me, a good way to learn vocabulary words is just flashcards. 
Oh yeah, speaking of flashcards, link below as well. I have created flashcards deck. I have created, blah, can't speak English either. I have created flashcard decks for each of my recent videos and there will be a new flashcard deck for this video as well. So if you haven't yet signed up for receiving those flashcard decks, link in the description box. I really hope you learned something de este video. Hit the thumbs up if you did. It supports my channel a lot. Let me know in los comentarios what has held you back from working on your Spanish. And share with someone you think might also learn something from this video. Thanks for watching. Hasta la próxima. Bye. <laughs> I don't know what that okay. Who am I? I actually curled my hair today. Oh my gosh. I don't know when's the last time I curled my hair. <laughs> I literally never do my hair because it's not something I've ever improved at or tried to get good at. Can you hear that? Thank you for leaving. Okay. <laughs> Somebody in their car with way loud music. <sighs> okay. I need some water. I need to breathe. I need to... <sighs> You can't even see. Ta-da! My daughter.